Genetics has its own vocabulary, and there's some words that are thrown around that you might have heard and might not know what they mean or what they're referring to. So I'm going to talk about two of those today, phenotype and genotype. Phenotype and genotype are probably not terms that you come across anywhere else other than in genetics. And that's really because they are specific to the types of things that we see in genetics. So let's go through what these definitions mean and how they're actually applied in the real world. So to start off with genotype. The genotype, if we look at the definition, it is the genetic constitution of an individual organism. Now, if you're still confused at that, it's okay. I'm gonna show you what that means. If I go to 23andMe in their browse raw data, I look up any of these SNPs that they tested, I can see the genotype here. I've circled it, the genotype is CC. That is the actual letters on the DNA at that specific location. That's the genotype. So when you think of the genotype, think of the specific letters, A, C, T, or G, at a specific location for your two chromosomes. Now, I can see that here, this same location on a different person, they are a dash and a C. That dash means a deletion, a letter that's not there that should be there. So that's what their genotype is. And here is a third person, same exact location. Their genotype is a dash dash. So we have three different people at the exact same location that have three different genotypes because genotypes are the exact letters at that location. But now we go to phenotype. And that definition is the set of observable characteristics of an individual resulting from the interaction of its genotype with the environment. So we see that in order to define phenotype, we need genotype. So the genotype plays a role in the phenotype, but it's not the only role. So let's take a look at a specific trait, the ABO blood group that people have. And that's actually what I was showing you from those three individuals. We have three different genotypes that I showed. CC, C nothing, and nothing nothing. Those are three different genotypes. But when we translate that into the phenotype, what we see is that CC is a phenotype of A blood. C nothing is also a phenotype of A blood. And nothing nothing is the phenotype of O blood blood. So we see that this genotype actually feeds into the phenotype, but it's not necessarily a one-to-one. -one. That has to do with the recessive or dominant genes, as well as, in some cases, environmental factors that are feeding into it. In this case, we have two phenotypes, A blood type and O blood type, but they're made up of three different genotypes. Now, this is just a simple example we can actually go and see some even more complex examples that involve multiple genes in order to get different genotypes that feed into multiple different phenotypes as well. But think of genotype as the actual genetic code and phenotype as what is expressed because of that genetic code. If you wanna watch something else about DNA, then watch this video up here. If you want to watch one of my wife's videos on genealogy, then watch the video down below. Be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and if you want to join FHF Extra for only $2.99 a month, click on the join button below where you will get more videos and webinars every month.